Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Malhoit. Uh, ignore the V Brown Bag logo for the next 12 minutes or so. Uh, I actually work for Cisco in the NCMABU, uh, which is basically the ACI BU or the Nexus 9000 series switches BU. I'm um, just going to go through a few slides and then I have a demo for all of you. So, um, you know, why do we want to use ACI with OpenStack? That's what the main point of this discussion is. Well, first of all, we support floating IPs now, so I just want to make that very clear. Um, we put, we save you CPU cycles, right? We're putting the network forwarding in the switches, which is what the switches are very good at. That's what they've always done. The ASICs are actually built to do that. So we're actually saving you precious CPU cycles. Operations and telemetry, we can give you health scores, we can give you atomic counters, we can tell you where uh, packet loss occurs using things like the troubleshooting wizard very easily, point and click, we can find these things. Um, we have an integrated underlay and overlay, meaning there's one place to manage your network, right, with the APIC, the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. We can also integrate very easily bare metal servers if you need to. I know we don't talk a lot about bare metal probably with OpenStack, but there are cases where you want to integrate that, database servers, legacy servers, et cetera. Um, OpenStack doesn't have service chaining natively, so we can give you that with ACI, of course, if you need to stitch in layer four through seven services like firewalls and load, load balancers. Um, but we also give you the visibility into that. So we want to automate things. We can, we can stitch in these, these service graphs and whatnot. Um, but with automation, we don't want to lose visibility, and that's something very important to us. And of course, secure multi-tenancy. In a pure overlay model, if a hypervisor gets hacked, attacked, owned, however you want to phrase it, um, you can lose that, that tenant security, right? So we offer that at the port level, right? So you get a more secure model. We do have the group-based policy uh, driver now. Uh, it's a newer thing, newish. It's 100% open with an Apache-based license. So while we designed it to work well with the APIC, again, the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, which is our controller in ACI, uh, you can use it with any software-defined networking controller that you want, right? Um, of course, we prefer you use it with the APIC, but uh, it, it will work with any SDN controller because, again, it's 100% open. And Cisco is really concentrating on that now. Uh, not, not something you often equate with Cisco, but, but we are heading in that direction. We do still have two options. We have the ML2 driver, um, which doesn't give you the one-to-one -one mapping with the APIC, right? Um, it's perfectly great to use, but you're going to have some conversion going on there. Uh, where in the OpenStack world, we're, do we're dealing with networks and routers, and, and I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the terminology there. Uh, in the ACI world, we're dealing with policies and endpoint groups and things like that. So we don't get that one-to-one -one mapping. Um, but this is great for people that are OpenStack peer right? And it will still work. We still have that conversion going on, and it all works great. For those that are really invested in ACI, you might want to consider the GBP, the group-based policy driver. Um, so this does offer more of a one-to-one -one mapping. We have rule sets, which equate to uh, uh, policies and contracts, and it, it all uh, works out. There's no conversion there. Um, should note that only one model is uh, you can be used with each OpenStack environment. So you can't use both the ML2 and the GBP driver in one OpenStack environment. Introducing OpFlex. Op OpFlex is a southbound protocol that allows you to basically seamlessly update things. Um, before OpFlex, we had to hook in our hypervisor, uh, our servers, basically, as a physical domain. So in ACI world, that means while it works great, and of course we work with bare metal servers, um, we don't get the visibility from the APIC into things like VMs. We don't learn those automatically. And I'll show you in the demo that I run how that kind of works, where we can learn IP addresses and MAC addresses and, again, get more of that visibility into the virtual realm. With OpFlex now, of course, we can do that. Um, so we can do that VMM domain integration, which is what we call it, uh, much like we would with VMware or Microsoft. OK, so I'm going to start my demo. Um, this first little picture here is basically me showing you that this was a CLI configuration. Did everything in the CLI. There's nothing that important here, um, but just created some rule sets 
external networking, NAP policies, group policies. Uh, my group policies are MySQL and Apache policies, basically. Um, the Apache for web servers and the MySQL servers. And then I created four servers, two MySQL, two Apache servers. Um, the Apache servers have floating IPs because you know, they're web servers. They need those public IP addresses. And let's see if we can play it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like in the GUIs now. So here's obviously my Red Hat OpenStack uh, GUI. As I said, I have two Apache servers, two MySQL servers. And you can see the Apache servers have two IP addresses, one floating IP, one fixed IP, and the MySQL address, or servers have uh, fixed IPs. I'll show you my policies now. Like I said, MySQL and Apache policies. Uh, this is a provider-consumer model, much like ACI. We use that provider-consumer promise theory-ish model. Um, the Apache servers also have an external policy. Obviously, they need to get to the public. So that's what that is. And there's my external policy there. So as you can see, my CLI was all to configure OpenStack. There was nothing ACI about it, nothing APIC related. I show my policy rule sets here. I have a MySQL uh, rule set and an external rule set, again, for that external uh, access. Rule sets are created from uh, rules, classifiers, and actions. So again, you know, we're doing that. We're, we're finding which protocols we need um, and whether to allow or deny access. Generally, we're going to be allowing access because ACI is a whitelist model. So we're very secure in that way. Everything is denied until we explicitly permit it. Now here's my APIC. Again, my application policy infrastructure controller. Uh, this is our controller for ACI. Now I'm going to show you how we created all those things in OpenStack, and it automatically creates it in uh, on the APIC. So let me pause this right here, because it goes a little fast. I've clicked on my application EPGs, which are endpoint groups in ACI. You can see my two EPGs, one Apache, one MySQL. Um, those are created from the policy groups I created in OpenStack. So that's that one-to-one -one ratio, or mapping, I was talking about. I do have two other EPGs there. Those are for common services. Those are like shadow EPGs, things like DHCP, uh, common services that you need with your servers. And then all the contracts are there, which are kind of like rule sets in OpenStack. So these are the contracts that allow the traffic that you need. If I can find my mouse. And now it's going to go slow, of course, because I jumped ahead. OK. So now under VM networking, we have an OpenStack option, much like we had a VMware and Microsoft option before. So this OpenStack option uh, comes with that OpFlex uh, agent that I was talking about. This gives you that visibility into VMs, um, deeper visibility into your virtual kind of OpenStack environment. And here I can see my hypervisors, right? I click on one hypervisor, one, one server. I can see all the VMs on that server. You see two Apache One servers there. That's the same server, but since it has two IP addresses, a floating IP and a fixed IP, shows up twice. But you can see everything I learned. <clears throat> the IP address, the MAC address, um, the state, whether it's up or down. I can see all of that automatically. I didn't have to enter any of that in the APIC. That all comes from OpenStack. I can also break it down uh, via network, right? Port group, what have you. So eventually I'll click on that. I can click on a certain network, see which hypervisors are attached to that network. I can see which leaf switch in my spine leaf architecture for ACI um, it's attached to, in this case, node 401. I can see the VMs on it. Again, the tap names, uh, the state, whether it's up or down learned IP and MAC addresses. So this helps me correlate between my physical and my virtual worlds, basically, right? This gives me that visibility and that ease of troubleshooting that we need when it comes to orchestrating everything and automating everything. I can also uh, click on a certain endpoint or server, if you will. I can get stats for that. So here I'm showing uh, a ping from a MySQL server to an Apache server. I already had the ping going. And I'll go back into the APIC and click on stats. And you can see the actual traffic being transmitted there. How much traffic, I can go through to you know, what time, all of that good stuff. Um, you can see that I have a 100% health score right there. 
Now, this is all great, but how many times are we really going to check the traffic when everything's working? Well, we're probably going to check it when there's a problem, right? So in order to kind of illustrate this, I'm going to just shut down, disable a port uh, that, that my hypervisor is attached to. So I'll go into pod one. I'll go into my interfaces, physical interfaces, and actually just disable port 133 on my leaf node 401, which is just what I've named it. Named it. So it's down. The OpenStack admin can see that I can't ping anymore. Ping has stopped. But how do I figure out why, right? Well, it's pretty simple. If I go back into my APIC, click on tenants. That's where all this configuration was done. It's done for a certain tenant, right? I'll go back into my EPGs and click on my MySQL EPG or endpoint group. My health score is 50, right? No good. So how do I dive in, get more granular? I click on the health tab. MySQL, zero. Uh, I can see node 401 is where the problem is, right? Leaf node 401. I can dive deeper, and I can actually see that it's port 133 on node 401 that is problematic. So, you know, obviously I knew this was happening, but it, it could have been any sort of hardware or software failure, um, and I would have been able to dive in granularly and see where that issue was. And I wouldn't have to actually start where the issue was either. I could uh, sign on, log in immediately to the APIC, and see that the health scores were down, because it's going to show me that in the system dashboard immediately. So that's all I had for today. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Malhoy on Twitter or uh, cisco.com slash go slash ACI. And that's all.